functional, true functionality on the one side and non-true functionality or a more complex form of true functionality on the other side. And then there is the question of uh, resource, uh, resources. Classical logic uh, is a logic uh, which is uh, not sensitive to resources, and uh, classical logic instead are. Um, so what is the challenge uh, of uh, developing uh, a proof, proof theory for, uh, uh, for non-classical non logic? So non-classical non -classical logics typically are developed as alternatives to classical logic, uh, but they're often extensions uh, in some sense uh, of classical logic. So we have a formal apparatus that builds on, uh, on that uh, of classical logic, but because of the many differences, uh, both the theory, so the calculi, the logic and deductive systems, and also the meta theory have to be rebuilt uh, completely from scratches. Uh, and to do that, uh, we, we have to uh, look at the general way of uh, uh, answering the question of what is a correct, uh, a correct uh, logical argument. The two uh, typical uh, traditions are the syntactic and the semantic tradition, uh, which the proof theoretic and the model theoretic. And uh, these, uh, these two traditions are linked together by completeness theorems. And uh, uh, we also have uh, many available calculi for a reasoning. So on, on, the, on the syntactic side, uh, where the axiomatic, uh, axiomatic systems, uh, we have natural deduction, uh, tableau systems, uh, sequence calculi. And uh, so the, there is a plurality of uh, of different systems, and there is a more consensus uh, on uh, on the semantics. So, here on the on the syntactic side, uh, I will follow sequence calculus because it is it gives uh, the more mo most general results. Uh, and uh, the sequence calculus, as it was introduced by Gensen, but uh, in a modification that was developed later by Ketton and Tragali and Prostradikov. And on the semantic side, instead, uh, I will follow the integral click semantics, so, uh, relational semantics. <clears throat> so the challenges uh, are given to the development of the proof theory and classical logics are given by the fact that uh, uh, we have uh, ever expanding domains of applications of logic, so we no longer just have logic and mathematics, but also in philosophy, in computer science, in linguistics, in, in cognitive science, uh, in uh, social science, uh, and uh, on the one hand. So uh, we, we have uh, uh, lots of fields that really demand uh, for uh, logical analysis. On the other hand, the, the proof theory of uh, non-classical logic, and especially modern logic, has been uh, quite poor. and. Uh, uh, it has been difficult uh, to, uh, to develop analytic proof systems, even for very basic model systems uh, like S5. Um, and uh, another challenge is the development of calculi that uh, uh, permit the automatization of a proof search and counter model construction. So on the one hand, uh, we have generality of uh, the model theory, the model theory based on uh, critical semantics. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, there are very uh, scattered uh, and good directly developments uh, in uh, for the proof theory of modern and classical logic. And there has been a proliferation uh, of many different formalisms calculated beyond Gensel systems. Uh, and uh, there, there have been uh, also expressions uh, of the phytism uh, in the early years, uh, in recent years. Uh, like uh, this, uh, from the handbook of model logic, no, no proof procedure suffices for every normal model logic determined by a class of frames. And uh, now I would like to draw a comparison, uh, like a kind of me me metaphor, with uh, the Cartesian method. So in uh, the discourse on method, uh, Descartes um, presented uh, his point of view on uh, uh, the foundations uh, of uh, analytic geometry. He 
wrote that he, he was not satisfied uh, with the three things. So he said that in earlier years I, I had made some study of logic in the philosophy course and of geometrical analysis and algebra and mathematics, three arts or branches of knowledge that seem destined to contribute to my plan. But on examining them, I noted in the case of logic that it's a syllogism and most of its other techniques are employed are employed more to explain things to other people than one knows of them. As for ancient geometrical analysis and modern algebra, the form is so closely tied to the consideration of figures that it is unable to exercise the intellect without the great retiring the imagination, whereas in the latter case, one is so much a slave to certain rules and symbols that it has been turned into confused and obscure art that bewilders the mind instead of being a form of knowledge that cultivates it. This was why I thought that another method had to be found which retained advantages of all three, but was free from their defects. And uh, so, let's, uh, let's uh, go to this uh, threefold method. So you see, this is a column and there are three faces. <coughs> uh, so I go back uh, to uh, the, the three ways uh, of analyzing a logical argument. And uh, so the, the first uh, way uh, is axiomatic. So we, we ask whether uh, some conclusion follows from some acceptable set of axioms. And then uh, there is the semantic way that uh, asks whether something is valid with respect to some class of models. And the deductive, uh, whether it follows uh, by some uh, acceptable rules of inference. And uh, uh, so they correspond to three main aspects of logic, the normative, the deductive, and the descriptive. So the normative based on axioms, the deductive based on proofs, and the descriptive based on models. And so these three aspects are linked together by uh, the big meta theorems of, of, of logic. So we have uh, uh, the link between the normative and the deductive is given by the deduction theorem. So the deduction theorem uh, that says that uh, deduction from hypothesis can be internalized through implication is what connects uh, reasoning deductively in an axiomatic system and reasoning deductively in a Gensin system, natural deduction and sequence calculus. Instead, the, the um, axiomatic uh, and the model theoretic uh, are linked together by completeness theorems, uh, completeness theorems uh, based uh, on canonical models, uh, the Hankin style completeness. Uh, whereas uh, the link between the, the model theoretic uh, and the deductive is given uh, by completeness theorem, but in a different style, the Tate Schutt uh, Takeuchi style uh, completeness theorem that says that uh, given uh, something you either find uh, a proof uh, or a counter model for any given, uh, any given segment. So in classical logic, the situation uh, is uh, quite uh, neat. And uh, so and these are both uh, work very well. But when we come to non-classical logics, uh, well, I have put uh, some uh, question marks. Um, and the reason for this question marks uh, is that uh, um, well, we know what are the axioms typically. The, the, the upper part of this uh, triangle is uh, usually well, well established, but uh, it is difficult to reason in an axiomatic system. Uh, they are better for presenting a logic, but not for actually reasoning within the logic or for establishing meta theorems. Uh, the, um, then uh, there are uh, problems uh, with, uh, uh, with the completeness uh, theorems, uh, both uh, the Hankin style and the Schutte takeuchi style, um, because there are logics uh, that are incomplete. Uh, and uh, um, so sometimes uh, uh, for model logics, we can have canonical models that fall out from the intended uh, intended class of models. Uh, there are also logics, uh, like uh, first of the model logic, uh, where one can have uh, uh, 
formulas which are valid but not derivable, so the deductive, uh, the axiomatic deductive system is actually incomplete, intrinsically incomplete. And then, uh, uh, so the problem, uh, there is a problem also with that, that is all really not a real problem, as you will see, but it has been considered a problem, uh, alleged failure of the deductive dedu deduction theorem in, in modern logic. And then uh, the, the big, big problematic part is this, that the, deductive, the deductive part, because uh, uh, proof theory for non-classical model logic has been uh, underdeveloped. Um, so it has been difficult to, to develop against the systems or already for systems, basic systems such as S5. Uh, why do we, uh, so I said that it's difficult to reason uh, with uh, uh, axiomatic systems. And uh, so this uh, I'll show you with one example why it is so. Um, so this is, it's already difficult uh, in, uh, in uh, classical propositional logic. So this is the hilbert werner system for uh, classical propositional logic. So we have a list of axioms, one rule, so one rule, more exponents. And uh, if uh, uh, these systems uh, are very popular and it's very simple to, to, give a, to present a logic via an axiomatization, but they are next to impossible to be used in practice. Uh, this is the derivation of A in plus A. <laughs> so you, you have to use uh, three instances, uh, one rather complicated, of uh, uh, those axioms for implication, uh, and two steps of modus ponens. So one really has uh, to sort out, uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, not, uh, so these are very unfriendly systems uh, for humans, but even for machines. So what, because one has to guess uh, the appropriate instantiation of uh, axioms to start the derivation. And uh, in fact, uh, if uh, you look uh, at the book uh, on axiomatic systems or model logic, a lot of uh, the book uh, is devoted to establishing meta theorem that meta theorems that actually show that some rules are admissible. That, that the corresponding they are in practice the corresponding rules of natural deduction. And uh, like the deduction theorem uh, is admissibility of the rule of implication and production, not less than that. Uh, so one, to, to use axiomatic systems, one needs to establish meta theorems. One cannot use them then, simply like that. Um, and they are very unfriendly. Gets and systems uh, were uh, uh, introduced to, to overcome, uh, overcome these difficulties. And uh, Gens introduced uh, two systems, as you know, natural deduction and sequence calculus. Um, they have uh, trivial axioms, so the typical axiom at the initial sequence is A and A to start the derivation. You don't have to prove that A implies A, but it, it is an uh, initial sequence. And natural rules, so the idea is that the rules correspond to, the, to human reasoning. Um, and there is a duality between uh, introduction and elimination rules. Um, the fact that there is this duality, also called symmetry or harmony between uh, the introduction and elimination rules, permit uh, to uh, establish uh, uh, results uh, about uh, uh, normalization of proofs. So one can show that proofs uh, can be reduced to nice form. Um, so this nice form is called the normal form for natural deduction, cut-free form for sequence calculus, and uh, they can be used to establish, uh, for instance, consistency. Uh, was and uh, this uh, uh, calculus introduced by Gensen uh, were uh, later improved uh, by Kettonen, who devised it for the, the, the first system, G3, for classical propositional logic uh, and by Kline, Dragali, and Trustra. Uh, the G3 calculi uh, improve uh, Gensen's original system in uh, providing a system with invertible rules. 
and also a system where uh, not only the rule of thumb, but also the other structural rules of weakening and contraction are admissible rules. So they, they uh, improve uh, determinism, improve search. Uh, the rules also have shared context. Uh, I will then illustrate of this notion when I give, uh, I, I give the rules. And uh, um, also, these calculi are, uh, allow a uniform treatment of uh, classical and intuitionistic logic because uh, they, they are multi succeeding cal calculi where. Uh, intuitionistic logic is obtained from the classical calculus by minor restrictions uh, on, uh, on the rules, uh, the rules for implication and universal quantifier. So this is the calculus of G3 for classical, uh, classical propositional logic. Uh, so as you see, the calculus has an initial sequence uh, which are uh, restricted to atomic formulas. P stands for an atomic formula. And uh, all of the, uh, the logical rules, the logical rules of the two premise uh, have the characteristic feature. So unlike uh, the rules uh, given by Gensen, uh, that they are uh, context sharing. So the same context uh, appears in both premises. And, uh, and then these are the structural rules. So the structural rule uh, rules uh, of uh, weakening in the first uh, line, contraction and cut. So the, the rule uh, of uh, weakening uh, allows you to add uh, assumptions. So if uh, gamma delta follows from gamma, then uh, delta follows also from A and gamma. Delta and gamma are multi-sets of formulas. Uh, so like list of formulas with uh, multiplicity but no, no order. And uh, the right weakening instead allows you to add cases. Then uh, the rules of contraction say that uh, if you get uh, something uh, with uh, double uh, occurrence of a formula, then uh, you can get it also with a single occurrence. And uh, another uh, rules, uh, rule on the right hand side. And the rule of cut uh, gives the possibility of composing the relation. So all these. Uh, uh, these uh, rules uh, that uh, would uh, uh, the presence of these rules uh, as explicit rules in the calculus uh, would make a proof search an unfeasible task. So, because uh, for CAT, uh, you can, if you, if you had uh, to look for the derivation starting from the conclusion uh, applying uh, with first uh, the rules of the calculus so with a rule like CAT, you add a uh, non deterministic element uh, of the formula, the CAT formula A, that a priori can be or with the rules of contraction, you can uh, duplicate the formulas with no, no end. With weakening, uh, you can remove formulas. But uh, so you, this uh, would uh, make uh, the calculus unfeasible. Uh, but uh, the, the nice factor of uh, this uh, sequence calculus G3C is that uh, all its rules are invertible uh, with high preserving it means that if we derive the conclusion of the of a rule with the derivation of height bound, bound with by n, then you can derive also the premise with the same bound of derivation height. So the applying root first the rules of the calculus uh, gives you an equivalent problem. So there is no need to backtrack. So you always uh, get uh, clo closer to the solution. And, uh, uh, and then the admissibility of the structural rules is that the, the, the rules of weakening and contraction are certainly admissible, so you don't need those rules. Uh, and also cut is admissible. So actually the calculus that one uses does not have uh, these rules, but only And uh, so uh, this gives a termination in root first proof search and determinism. Uh, so the calculus can be used to find either proofs of reputation. So one typically apply root first the rules of the calculus, and one either finds the final number of steps, either all initial sequence or conclusion of that falsity, or a sequence to which no rule is. Uh, applicable 
and that will differ the, the counterexample. So it's a non, non, non variable. So there is a, a perfect match between uh, the normative, the deductive, and the descriptive aspects for classical logic and and also the deductive corner becomes predictive because we have a decision procedure, a simple decision procedure. Uh, then uh, uh, completeness theorems are uh, uh, also work nicely. And so we have uh, this, this diagram where uh, we have canonical models for uh, the descriptive part and uh, the G3 calculi. The, the completeness proof uh, uh, at the Takeuti essentially uses the fact that the, uh, the rules of the calculus are invertible. Because being invertible, they do not preserve the reliability, but they also preserve counter model. So if uh, I apply the rules of the calculus and define the counter model to a segment with which no rule is applicable and which is not an initial segment or a conclusion of that falsity, then by the invertibility of the rule, this thing is also a counter model to the conclusion. So what about uh, non-classical logics? Uh, now we have uh, these uh, uh, lines which are now continuous. And uh, uh, so let's start with the simple thing, which is the deduction theorem. Uh, it is not true that the deduction theorem fails for modern logic, even if this has been a belief, uh, at least by some authors. Um, actually, looking at the literature, I found that, that there, was, there was no agreement. Some say that uh, it fails. Some say that it doesn't fail, they actually do the proof, but they know where it depends. And, uh, but, uh, so, <coughs> to remind you of the problem, this is uh, the failure argument in brief. Uh, the failure argument uh, goes like that. So, you first, you start from uh, uh, A gives A, and then uh, this type of necessitation gives A uh, turnstile box A. But we don't have that A implies box A. So this is the argument that one finds um, in the literature. But so the, the problem with this argument is that uh, it's the step of necessitation. Because the, the rule of necessitation which is the rule in an axiomatic system for modal logic, is a rule which is applied in an axiomatic system. And in an axiomatic system, you, each step of your inference is a tautology. It doesn't depend on assumptions. So the problem is in importing the necessitation done for an axiomatic system to a necessitation for an axiomatic system extended for reasoning with assumptions. And uh, uh, so the, the right way of uh, formulating necessitation in an axiomatic system with assumption is to say that you can apply necessitation, but only if the thing you have does not depend on any assumption. So in, in particular, here, it does depend on an assumption A, it depends on the assumption A. So you cannot apply necessitation. Um, so the form of necessitation will be if you have proved A, then you prove a box A. And uh, this is similar to the rule of universal generalization in first order logic, uh, where we can derive an universal generalization only under the assumption that uh, the formula A of X does not depend on any assumption on its uh, free variable x. And uh, so similarly, in a model logic, so you can't uh, derive that uh, a is box a unless a is already derivable. This is actually can be proved by 
formulating a sequence calculus which is equivalent to the axiomatic system and the only way to derive a French style boxer is to already have a division of A. So uh, the failure argument is wrong and uh, if you're interested there is uh, uh, all the um, complete reconstruction of, of the, the literature and what, what led to this argument in this paper of mine. Uh, so the, this part is in the deduction here, so this is not a problem. So, uh, because uh, that was also considered an argument uh, for the possibility of developing a proof theory for model logic. Okay, the deduction theory doesn't work, so it's impossible. But in instead, uh, uh, the deduction theory is not a problem. So how do we move uh, from a classical to non-classical calculus? Uh, in uh, uh, one can try to modify the G3 calculus uh, for uh, uh, starting from classical logic. One can, for example, obtain uh, G3 calculus for intuitionistic logic simply by modifying the rules for implication. There you have uh, the left implication rule is modified by the presence of uh, the principal formula in, in the left. And this is needed to, to preserve admissibility of contraction. Instead, the right implication rule is modified to uh, a form that doesn't have any context in the premise, any right context in the premise. Uh, how far can we go in this way? So, extending or modifying the G3 calculus. Not very far, indeed. Uh, because there are ad hoc solutions for system K, the basic system of modal logic, for S4, for the optic logic, for some of their variants, but uh, in general this approach cannot be extended uh, to other modal and non-classical logics. Uh, so the alternative is to make a step back, I think, more broadly, uh, which is what I will do now. Um, so we wanted to consider all the three aspects that we have, the axiomatic, the deductive, and the semantic aspects. Aspect. And uh, to do that, uh, we need to extend the proof analysis to theories with axioms uh, and to non-classical logics. So to extend the proof analysis to theories with axioms means that uh, we need to extend the sequence calculus uh, to a system that includes certain axioms uh, for, for specific theories and maintains uh, the structural properties of the calculus we started with. And then uh, for non-classical logics we need uh, to formulate the rules for uh, the new uh, connectives or the new modalities which are uh, defined in terms uh, of uh, uh, relational semantics. And uh, um, there are criteria in the literature for what, it, what counts as a good extension of, uh, of a calculus. And uh, there was a paper by Ian Mekin, What is Logic, that gives a list of uh, desiderata. Uh, one is that the addition of, of rules uh, should be done through a uniform procedure that gives a complete calculus. Uh, the, the extension should be conservative, non creative, so by adding the rules for the connection, you shouldn't uh, modify uh, the system, the conclusion for the others. And uh, in sequence calculus, uh, these facts follow for, from uh, the structural properties, cut elimination, and um, sequence calculus, and uh, for normalization, uh, and the sub formula property in natural deduction. Also, the structural properties of the inference relation have to be maintained and uh, sequence calculus uh, we have admissibility of weakening contraction and cut and also the reduction of initial sequence to atomic uh, form. And uh, also analyticity, so which is not always a consequence of cut elimination, uh, has to be maintained. So the fact that in a derivation we only find content that is uh, already in the conclusion. 
so how do we find that this is simple calculate? Uh, there is a, uh, a general recipe that uh, works for finding simple calculate. Uh, one is that uh, we start with uh, some semantic explanation and we uh, transform it into uh, introduction rules. Uh, and this will be natural reduction style rules. Uh, then uh, we apply the so-called uh, inversion principles and uh, obtain uh, from uh, the introduction rules uh, elimination rules. Um, and the, the, what we will get uh, is a system of natural deduction with general elimination rules, of which the, the normal rules of natural deduction in special cases. And then uh, we translate the natural deduction system that we have obtained this way into a simple calculus. So that to translate the natural deduction system into a simple calculus means uh, that uh, we internalize the deducibility relation uh, the assumptions, uh, the, the rules of uh, sequence calculus uh, as opposed to natural deduction are local. So at each uh, step, uh, the rules list all the assumptions and all the cases. The introduction rules become uh, right, uh, right rules, uh, the elimination rules are left rules. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, so now we have a sequence calculus, and then we refine the sequence calculus into G3 style sequence calculus. Uh, by making the rules invertible, by having initial sequence limited to atomic formulas, and uh, having arbitrary context uh, and shared context in the rules. And now uh, this general uh, recipe works uh, for when we start with the uh, Brouwer writing on the world of interpretation, explanation of the logical constants, uh, this recipe will give uh, the G3 sequence calculus. And this is the way they are introduced in the book, structural proof theory. If we start instead with relational semantics, we obtain a label sequence system. Uh, but for, uh, for label calculi, there is a fifth step, because uh, uh, these four st stages will give only the basic system, like the system for the basic model logic K. Uh, you have uh, a fifth stage, because so if you internalize quick uh, semantics, uh, you will have the possibility to obtain a calculi for specific logics by adding uh, the rules that correspond to the frame conditions. So if you add, uh, if you want the calculus for T, you will just have to add uh, the rule that corresponds to the frame condition for T. T is the action box A implies A, and the frame condition is the fixing. If you want uh, the, rule, uh, the system for K4, you will add uh, uh, transitivity and so on. Uh, and uh, this uh, fifth part uh, is obtained by using a methodology that was already developed uh, when uh, I started working with model logic, which is the methodology of uh, transforming axioms into rules. Uh, let's uh, see then uh, in detail uh, how this works uh, for the, basic, the system K. Um, so K is uh, the basic model logic. It is obtained by extending classical propositional logic with the necessitation and the distribution axiom. Uh, the first stage is uh, converted the explanation into introduction. The explanation of the modality is the X, X is a possible world of forces, box A, if for all worlds accessible from X, they force A. So this gives uh, the rule of uh, box introduction, where uh, we have the assumption of uh, an arbitrary world accessible from X, uh, concludes that uh, the world of forces A, now there is a column to make uh, the notation more compact, uh, and it concludes by discharging the assumption on uh, the accessibility relation that X uh, forces box A. Uh, then uh, by applying inversion principle, but that follows from the ground from deriving a proposition, must follow from that proposition. Uh, this is similar to the rule, uh, to the general elimination rule for implication. We obtain uh, 
this rule of a box, box elimination. And this is the second stage of this procedure. The third stage uh, consists in uh, translating uh, the natural deduction rules uh, into secret calculus rules. It is an automatic thing, just in place the dots, the vertical dots with a sequence error and list of all the open assumptions at each stage and we get the rule of right box and the rule of left box. So now the left box rule is a two-point rule and now we can do uh, the improvement, so the fourth stage to obtain a good calculus uh, in G3 style. So uh, the improvement consists in, okay, the right box rule was already in the right form, the left box rule, we turn the left box rule into a rule with only one premise. And uh, so it will have uh, this form. So the uh, left box is applied only when we have an accessibility relation in the computer. And in this way, we eliminate one premise. Uh, and then uh, the fifth stage that is done for the Lego system, uh, adding the properties of the accessibility relation as a rules. So in the, in the case of T, we have the rule of flexibility. In the case of 4, we have the rule of transitivity. So uh, the rule says that the accessibility relation is flexible, the first one, the one on the left, the one on the right, that it is transitive. And this is the system that, that we get by this procedure. This is the basic uh, uh, sequence calculus uh, for uh, uh, K. We also have uh, the rules for, uh, for the possibility modality. And, uh, uh, okay, these are the rules for the basic system. And uh, what can we do? We can then extend to any system basically defined by relational semantics by adding the frame rules, which are rules that describe the behavior of accessibility relation. Uh, I put some dots there uh, because uh, now I will ask, try to answer to this question, which frame conditions can be treated? So this method works in a uniform way for a very wide class of frame condition, which is the class of geometric or coherent implications. Uh, geometric or coherent implications uh, are uh, formulas of the form, the universal closure of uh, implications between formulas that do not contain uh, themselves implications or universal quantifier. And uh, uh, geometric uh, coherent uh, implications can be uh, turn it into a convenient form, so every formula of that form above can, is equivalent to a conjunction, a final conjunction of formulas of that form. Universal closure of an implication between a conjunction of atomic formulas and a disjunction of existentially quantified conjunctions of atomic formulas. Uh, these uh, formulas are very useful because they can be turned into inference rules in a simple way, in a way that uh, uh, eliminates all the logical constants. So the, the, the reason why the uh, conversion of uh, axioms into inference rules works by maintaining a misleading structural rules is that no logic appears in the rules. And, uh, all of the logical constants of the axioms are expressed by, uh, by the geometry of the rules. So the conjunction on the left of an implication is uh, uh, translated by adding commas, uh, a list, list of formulas separated by commas in the conclusion. The disjunction is the positive part represented by a multiplicity of, uh, of premises. The uh, universal quantifier is implicit. The existential quantifier is represented by a variable condition. The existentially quantified variable is a variable that should not uh, appear anywhere else. So it's uh, just a variable condition. 
And uh, when uh, we expand the simple calculus, G3 simple calculus, by rules of this form, we can show that the, all the structural properties are not possible. And uh, this, these rules uh, are the rules that we need uh, to deal with classical logic. Most systems of classical logic, uh, they, they have, uh, so in this table I summarize some of them. Uh, so first uh, there is the name of the system, then uh, the characteristic axiom in the model language, then uh, the, the frame property in the first order language, properties for the accessibility relation and then uh, the corresponding uh, the corresponding rules. So the proof systems for each of those logic or combinations of, of those, uh, they are simply obtained by adding the, the rules that correspond to the axiom to the basic system for the logic K. And uh, so we obtain uh, these, uh, these results that uh, this everything that should uh, hold uh, actually holds. So, so. Um. Yeah. so in this uh, calculus, uh, for example, necessitation, that would be a rule which is not very nice proof theoretically because it would be a context dependent rule uh, as the, the condition of the context of the entity, uh, is an admissible rule. So we don't need the rule of necessitation. Uh, then uh, we have the reliability of the normality axiom, so the system is actually as strong as the K, and we have an equivalence uh, with the system, axiomatic system K and the admissibility of all the structural rules. Uh, here are some examples of derivations. Um, so, uh, do you think I can use some time of the discussion for uh, because I guess. Um, so, to show you how the, the calculus work, uh, we have, for example, derivation of uh, axiom T, and uh, uh, we start from the conclusion, apply the rules, and uh, uh, so the first rule will be right implication. And then uh, here to be able to apply the left box rule, we have one step of uh, reflexivity. And now we can apply the left, left box, and so we get the, uh, the radical sequence because we have the same formula with the same label from left and right. And we have the result that the initial sequence can be generalized to arbitrary formulas. We have the radical similar thing with the transitivity and uh, seriality. Um, so the results uh, are that, uh, so we, for this system, we have admissibility of the structural rules, the characteristic axioms are derivable, Necessitation is admissible, so this gives an indirect completeness proof to equivalence with the axiomatic system. Uh, but there is also a direct completeness proof. Uh, one can show that uh, one uh, can, uh, for any sequence in the language and the logic, you can either find the derivation in the calculus or uh, find a counter model. Uh, and the counter model uh, can be read off directly from uh, a non-terminating branch or a saturated branch, which can be uh, fine, fine. Uh, so this can give uh, either a constructive or non-constructive completeness proof, uh, depending on whether we are able to perform a finitization in the proof search. Um, We can also answer the general question of understandability. Uh, so the fact that some frame conditions don't correspond to model formulas through conservative theorems, and uh, answer to questions of accessibility through algorithm of terminating proof search. And there are also uh, some results on constructing proofs of model and probability embeddings. So the result that was uh, um, 
formulating the not told by Gilder in 1933 about the modern embedding of intuitionistic logic uh, has been uh, later proved uh, model theoretically. With this, uh, with this approach, uh, one can give uh, a very direct uh, and simple proof uh, of faithfulness of the embedding, uh, not just uh, for intuitionistic embedding, intuitionistic logic into S4, but for all the intermediate uh, logics between uh, uh, intuitionistic uh, and classical logic uh, and uh, their model companions, so the corresponding intermediate model logics between S4 and S5. And a similar embedding also from uh, intuitionistic logic to the probability logic of Gregorci. Uh, and these results appear in these two papers. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, coherent or geometric theories are not enough to cover all systems of modern logic, one needs more, uh, because there are some axioms that are not. Uh, do not correspond to geometric formulas, like the McKinsey condition uh, corresponds to this, uh, this frame condition that is not, uh, not geometric. There is also uh, an intermediate logic that does not have a geometric frame condition and uh, something which is also uh, has been studied now quite a lot. Uh, the, no, the logic of probability, so the logic which is used to analyze uh, the uh, church fitch paradox, uh, the, uh, the frame condition that corresponds uh, to the probability principle. The probability principle says that uh, uh, if something is true, then it is possible to know it. Uh, and it corresponds to this frame condition, which is also not a geometric. But, uh, uh, one can find rules that correspond also to these uh, uh, more general properties. Uh, and uh, the way I, I found this uh, class, uh, wider class of rules, is through first the analysis of a specific case, which was uh, an attempt to, to give an analytic group system for the logic of mobility to show that actually uh, uh, the problem, uh, uh, the fact that the, the, this paper feature proved that uh, if you assume that every truth is possibly known, then you get to the conclusion that every truth is actually known. But uh, this uh, uh, argument was done in classical epistemic logic. And uh, I wanted to show that uh, the, this, this argument fails if one has to place instead an intuitionistic basis. But it was necessary to show that the, uh, the argument uh, collapse between the knowability principle and uh, uh, the omniscience principle um, face an intuitionistic logic. You need to be able to show, to have full control not only on what is derivable, but also on what is not derivable. To establish that something is not derivable, you need to have uh, uh, an analytic proof system. Anyway, to, uh, this is the, the church switch paradox, uh, and now we have to hurry up a little bit uh, to, to get to some conclusion. Um, <coughs> this is the, uh, the logic that we need uh, to, to have uh, to analyze uh, the church switch principle, probability, and uh, so what, uh, what we need uh, is uh, a frame property that corresponds uh, to the probability principle. And uh, now with this example I will show you also that uh, when uh, we devise ba basic calculus we can use that basic calculus uh, to find uh, the additional rules that are needed. And I'll show you how it's done. So to find uh, the right rules uh, for probability we start uh, with this uh, calculus uh, for uh, the epistemic uh, analytic modality and uh, we look for uh, what we need to assume to find a proof of the knowability principle. 
So we start, uh, we apply the we need to apply, then we have the right implication of the rule of intuitionistic logic. And now, to be able to proceed with this proof, we need uh, to have an accessibility from Y to be able to apply the right of our So, and this, uh, the minimum requirement is to have a seriality property. And then, uh, we can apply the right diamond rule. And, uh, and then, uh, the right uh, K rule, K is uh, the knowledge operator. At this point, uh, to conclude, I have uh, to I need to have a bridge principle between the analytic and the epistemic accessibility. And that connects them with the uh, pre-order of the intuitionistic uh, implication. So this is the minimum requirement to get a, to get a proof. And we get the proof because this will be the initial sequence of the intuitionistic factors. And uh, this is an example that shows how we find, uh, we find uh, additional rules uh, to, uh, to get a complete system. And uh, the, these are the two additional rules, uh, but there is uh, one uh, complication that these two additional rules by themselves will be too strong, but in fact, uh, they have to be considered as a system of rules. In that specific derivation, uh, the upper rule is not applied to arbitrary labels, but uh, is applied that as a middle term, this Y, which is uh, the label introduced by the seriality. And uh, so by taking them as separate rules, we will get the system which is too strong. Uh, so they have uh, these, uh, these requirements that turn them into a system, a system of rules. And uh, they can be shown equivalent to this frame property, which is a frame property of mobility. Uh, by adding uh, this system of rules, so the combination of the two rules, we obtain a complete proof system for mobility logic, which is intuitionistic by model logic extended with the mobility principle. And then uh, show that uh, the omniscience principle is not, uh, is not derivable. Uh, the uh, frame property that corresponds to the mobility principle belongs to a wide, uh, wider class of, uh, uh, of axioms that uh, are investigated, uh, are investigated in later, later work. Uh, and they are called generalized geometric implications. So they are basically generated uh, uh, in a recursive way, starting from geometric, uh, geometric axioms. So one starts uh, with, the, with the geometric implications, then uh, at this, this looks at the class G0, GA0, and then uh, the class GA1 is obtained by having, instead of the conjunction of atomic formulas, formula in the class of CA0. And one proceeds later in that way. And uh, so one is an important class for many reasons uh, is that uh, um, well they uh, they are important for something that I will explain tomorrow that they they form a equivalent of class. So they, they give a generalization of our theorem of conservativity from classical intuitionistic theories. Uh, but they're also nice because uh, they provide analytic proof systems for any model logic in the southeast fragment. And, uh, and uh, I think by the time, one can actually then, uh, so these uh, rules are uh, non local rules, but one can also obtain a local rules uh, by, um, by having a, a geometrization, by performing a geometrization, extending, a, a considering a conservative extension of the language so that uh, basically any first order axioms uh, can be converted into system of rules. 
So we have a, a very broad coverage of any model logic defined by any first order condition. But this is not just that, because one can also get into situations where the um, I will skip this proofs and counter models. So we can have a situation so where, um, so these are all, all the, the logics that one can, can treat uh, by this methodology. Um, but in some cases, uh, Greek semantics imposes too much uh, because uh, it imposes uh, uh, the normality principle. So it imposes logical omissions, imposes normality. Uh, it imposes conflation between uh, uh, various principles that uh, connect uh, uh, the modality uh, and uh, uh, doxastic, uh, doxastic modalities and analytic modalities. And in some cases also the classical propositional basis that we use uh, is uh, too uh, tight. Uh, because we want to be able to model non-monotonic uh, uh, non reasoning uh, like uh, in the treatment of conditional logic or counterfactuals. But uh, as I said, this talk is about uh, the methodology and uh, uh, the methodology which has been developed uh, for uh, possible world semantics uh, in some cases uh, imposes too much structure. But uh, one uh, so the too much structure which is not adequate for uh, treating systems that one encounters in ontic logic or in uh, epistemic logic or, or uh, in the treatment of certain modalities that do not respect uh, the uh, normality requirements. Uh, but one can uh, go further and uh, obtain uh, systems, uh, proof systems uh, for uh, non-normal modern logics or, or for conditional logics uh, by simply uh, taking a more general semantics, uh, which is neighborhood semantics, neighborhood models, or uh, eternally accessibility relations. And uh, in, this, in this way, and then, uh, one uh, can uh, uh, give two conditions uh, for uh, uh, the non-monotonic modalities, uh, for the monotonic uh, modalities, uh, or for uh, the conditional or preferential conditional logic. This is something which is uh, similar to Lewis, uh, Lewis conditional, or the conditional of uh, conditional exhaustive logic. So, in the end, uh, what we, we, we achieve uh, in this way is that uh, uh, we move from uh, this picture uh, with the question mark to this one with the uh, solid uh, lines uh, using uh, relational models and labor calculi. But, and uh, we can also add uh, the predictive corner by uh, having a, a procedure of alphabetization uh, of the proof search. And, uh, the more general uh, goal, which is on one work, uh, is uh, to move uh, from uh, the normal system to the non-normal system using uh, generalization of labor semantics. And uh, yes, and then come to the conclusion that uh, non-classical logics uh, uh, appear everywhere in applications of logic, but they are mostly developed semantically. Uh, their proof theory can be developed in a uniform way using labeled uh, sequence calculi, and in this way one obtains the typical consequence of cut elimination. The calculi themselves in the basic form can be obtained to sort of bootstrap uh, other rules uh, that are needed to obtain a complete system to find the rules that correspond to certain frame properties uh, or to certain modal axioms if uh, the correspondence results are not already known. Uh, the calculi also provide us with uh, explicit uh, completeness proofs that cover also problematic cases.
basis in the literature, and they, these competence proofs can also be turned into a decision procedure by uh, appropriate uh, mechanism of uh, saturation or synthetic filtration to suitable embeddings into probability logics. And in this way, we unify the normative, descriptive, and deductive aspects, and also add, in some cases, the predictive one. And uh, this uh, methodology is uh, a modular methodology, not just modular in the sense that it produces many different algebra with the same method, but the methodology itself uh, is modular in the sense that we can change the semantics uh, and continue producing uh, uh, the results of this threefold method. So, and, uh, so uh, 